Okay, check, check, test, hello. All right. Okay, gang. So David Shapiro here. I'm actually a little bit nervous because of how cool this is and how close we are. So a lot of people ask me like, Dave, what is your timeline for AGI? And I'm like, we are so much closer than everyone realizes. Um, and the reason is because of what I call the, uh, the, the automation paradox or the paradox of automation. And so with automation, um, as, a, as an infrastructure automation engineer who has automated petabyte scale migrations and um, basically automated, like literally the biggest project that I did was I automated firmware upgrades for servers and storage for four data centers, and it did it all overnight. So like not to toot my own horn, well, I guess I am tooting my own horn, but I'm a damn good automation engineer. Um, <laughs> if it has an API, it can be automated. And guess what has an API now? OpenAI's assistant creation. So what are we going to do? Well, let me introduce you to this new project. So this is basically an evolution of the ACE framework, um, and I'll explain it to you as we go. But basically, now that we have the agents that can create the agents, and then we can give them files and tools and stuff, we have the rudimentary toolbox to create agent swarms which when you look at what they're capable of, so for instance, when you look at ChatDev, which was able to autonomously create software just with one single human instruction, we are at the cusp of creating fully fledged swarms of autonomous agents. So how do we get started? First, you need to think of how do you organize all this stuff? How do you even, how do you even orchestrate uh, this? You know, how do you decide what to create, when, and where? So that's what this project is for, OpenAI Agent Swarm. Project, hierarchical, hierarchical Autonomous Agent Swarms, or HOSS. So HOSS is a groundbreaking initiative, blah, 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 blah. I had, I had ChatGPT help me write this. Um, so the idea was to, I wanted it to be as explicit. So if you just stumble upon this, you read it, you'll get the idea of what it is. So um, I was being a little bit tongue in cheek, but basically the idea is you start with a supreme oversight board of agents. So these are the this is the equivalent of the aspirational layer of the of the ACE framework, where you have a series of agents that are, for instance, here let me zoom in a little bit more, um, that are uh, establish and uphold the ethical framework and overarching mission of the agent swarm, make high level decisions and judgments, including the creation and termination of other agents. So from a security perspective, because this is something that a lot of people ask about, how do you ensure that it's secure? How do you ensure that it's stable? You have one set of agents whose sole responsibility is the creation and termination of other agents. So rather than having one massive monolithic agent that is uh, self-correcting, you have a swarm, a fleet of agents with checks and balances. And so the Supreme Oversight Board, rather than doing any of the work, its primary role is to, is to provide steering. Um, and so that means it will create sub-agents. It'll, uh, it'll create the, the next layer, which is the executive agents. Um, and then it can also destroy any agent. So if it detects that an agent is doing something harmful or illegal, it can ax that agent and reinstantiate it with better instructions. And so then uh, we, we also give it, you know, uh, basically this is what I was just saying, monitoring agents uh, to ensure alignment with the core values and objectives. Uh, Role-based access control to maintain order and security within the system. And there, sh there will be checks and balances here, like you'll have a security department that is responsible for monitoring, uh, you know, all the permissions and privileges. And when you think about the fact that, uh, that cloud provider platforms like, uh, like Google, uh, uh, Azure, and AWS all have API accessible RBAC, uh, role-based access control, that means you can build an Azure agent that can build containers for the rest of your Azure agents. Um, so <laughs> this is eminently possible. This is why I'm so excited and so upregulated because it's like, guys, you don't know, like, or maybe if you're watching this, you do know, but like, you don't realize how close we are to just having fleets of fully autonomous agents. So I'm glad that I was doing the work that I've been doing. Um, okay. So I've, in this case, the ACE framework is six layers, um, but I've only got like kind of the top three layers here. Cause after that, you kind of figure out like. Chat Dev already demonstrated that you can have like a marketing agent and a coding agent and an integration agent and a documentation agent. So I'm only documenting the higher the highest layers. So the first idea that I'm adding is the Supreme Oversight Board. Um, then the executive agent. So this is like the CEO, CTO, whatever, whose primary like they this is where you start to get into uh, having specific domains. So the Supreme Oversight Board is more about making good judgments and supervising the whole process. Whereas the executive agents, these are when they first when they first start to have 
uh, specific roles and 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 domains of focus. And as I was I was explaining this to someone last night, and I said, yeah, like if you if you put uh, if you put like a revenue agent and a marketing agent in a room together, it's entirely possible they'll come up with stuff that is unethical, illegal, or whatever. And so, but that's fine, right? You have you have the the Tony Stark. You know, and 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 Tony Robbins, you know, agent talking together about how to, you know, build the coolest thing and market it. They might not come up with the best ideas, which is why you have oversight. That's why you have checks and balances, as well as so. There's there's two ways that this is this this is defined. Our back, if you're familiar with that, you understand that there's um, there's levels of inheritance. So basically, the way that I've got this structured is that the um, is that the board is tier zero, so that's the highest tier. The executive uh, agents are tier one, and any ones that they create are tier two, and so on and so forth. And so that you can very quickly establish where in the hierarchy, where in the rank an agent is, so that you know, like, okay, a tier two agent will never have permissions to shut down any other tier two, tier one, or two, tier zero agents. So that way you have very clear command structure. But then you can also have silos or vertical integration. So basically, like, if if the CTO created an agent, then like they have a bunch of inheritance, right? So it's like you you can you can it 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 automatically creates an org chart, TLDR. Okay, okay. So I think you get the idea. I've got some stories built in here so that you can kind of read through it and and get familiar with it. But I just wanted to give that introduction. And so where I was thinking last night, like where do you start? Where do you start with this? And so I realized, duh, the first thing that you do is you create an assistant to build assistants. So let's try that. So I, I got an assistant to work uh, last night. Uh, I guess maybe the file processing was was broken, but anyway. So I created Captain Picard, and uh, and it works. So like Captain, there's Klingons off the starboard bow, and so let's see what he says. Um, so you can see it, it it pulls all the threads, and so <laughs> you know red alert, Mister Wharf, raise shields and prepare to ro- charge weapons. Blah 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 blah. Okay, so this is the reason that I'm starting with this is because this demonstrates that the assistants, that the agents that we're creating here can adopt any persona or any archetype. And so why this is good is because that Supreme Oversight Board, you can have Socrates and Captain Picard and you know Mahatma Gandhi all on your, uh, on, your, uh, on your Supreme Oversight Board helping to discuss if a decision is moral or ethical or if it is in good faith or whatever. And so this is, that's why I started here is because it, it's not just a matter of of having a thing that you're trying to optimize for, right? This is this is one of the biggest disconnects between purely math and machine learning engineering and where we're going. Because I could give this a different mission. I could say, you know, your mission is to conquer the Klingon Empire, and it'll it'll go and try and do that, um, and just no questions asked. Uh, now, but if you say that, hey, you're part of a Supreme Oversight Board, if you add this documentation. Say, hey, this is what you're part of. You're part of a of an autonomous agent swarm, and this is your mission. Then it'll be able to integrate that information as well. And so, like taking a step back, what I'm going to try and do is cre- is next create an agent that understands this, and then we'll go from there. So let's just d- jump right in. Um, all right, so let's create a new one, and so this will be a um, uh, autonomous swarm agent builder. Um, okay, your mission is to help the user create agents, uh, autonomous agents for the Haas system. All right, and so then we'll do preview, and then we'll do uh, files. Um, let's come back over to Agent Swarm, and I'll upload the README and the OpenAI documentation. So what I forgot to show you was that I took all of the most salient OpenAI documentation and saved it into a markdown file. So now I'm giving it two files. I'm giving it the readme document so that it knows what it is, what it's trying to do, and then the documentation of how to write it. So if this works, then I will have just with uploading, you know, giving one set of instructions and two files, we should soon have a, an agent that can help me build agents. So let's save this and see if it works. Well, that was fast. <laughs> okay, cool. So then we come over to the playground, and I say, "Cool, uh, let's get started." Um, uh, how do you think we should build uh, the first uh, Sob agents? And then let's see what it does. Oh my god, I'm so excited! 
<laughs> you guys, I'm losing my marbles over here. Okay, so let's see. Let's look at the log. So what it's doing is it's going to be going through the threads. Um, it's pulling a bunch of stuff. Okay, to create automate with the high assurance, it looks like it didn't. It uh, yeah, it, it didn't search it correctly. Okay, let's see. I don't think. Do you know what the sob is? It, I don't think it fetched the the data correctly. So this is disappointing. But this is why we're this is why we're doing a test. So the the most you're allowed to have is up to up to twenty files. So it might behoove us to let's see self organizing behavior. So it's completely confabulating here. That's really disappointing. I gave it the files. It's getting close, but it's it's doubling down on stuff. So. Well, this is our first problem. So I gave it documentation and it's not using it correctly, um, which is really interesting. Um, let, let's see if it understands function calling. Um, let's see, do you understand function calling? It might be because the, the documents that I gave it are pretty big. So first, like this is 57, almost 60,000 characters long. So what, what we might do is actually break this down into smaller documents. Um, where it's like instead of instead of all of the OpenAI documentation in one, we'll do um, we'll do uh, smaller bits, and then this is this is only eleven thousand characters. This should be pretty straightforward. Like it can read this all in one shot. Um, let's see, add numbers, um, add numbers. Yeah, so it's it's not even it's not even reading it, it like it's not reading the function calling stuff. This is weird. Let me go over to chat and um, and plug in plug it all in here. So let's do that. Let me just copy paste the documentation here and see if if just putting it in here without anything else will work. All right. So now I'm giving it the the README and the OpenAI OpenAI documentation. Um, hey, let's figure out how to create a sob agent um, builder. So basically, we're gonna start with agents that help you build other agents. Okay, now let's see if let's see if just giving it all the background. Okay, so now it's Supreme Oversight Board. It's got it here. Okay, so there's some disconnect between the way that it's using um, on the other side because this it very clearly knows like what we're doing. Like it knew Supreme Oversight Board. Yep, by following the steps. Cool. Um, let's see. Can you take a stab at just writing a Python script that will build the uh, agent for me using the OpenAI Assistant beta? All right. So it talks through. Please note that this script is blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yep. It's all right. So it's going by really fast. So I'll... I'll <laughs> I'll rewind a second and show you, but this clearly is a better way. So what we'll need to do is do some experiments to figure out why the assistant isn't referring to the documents because literally all I did, did was just copy paste it into the system window, a crap ton of documentation, and it's able to run with it. So, okay, so let's see what it said. Whoops, come back. Scrolling up. Okay, so define it, sob agent builder. Um, ethical framework. So we gave it an ethical framework, which is great. Uh, mission: reduce suffering, increase prosperity, en enhance understanding, do no harm, promote well-being. Whoops, darn it. Sorry. Um, promote well-being and respect autonomy. Um, so it 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 confabulated that, which those are not necessarily uh, bad things. But okay, cool. Prioritize safety, ensure fairness, and maintain transparency. I wonder if this is some of OpenAI's underlying alignment leaking in. Which, if that's if that's the case, then okay. You know, um, but yeah, so it, it came up with, it, it followed my mission, and then it added principles and guidelines. Instructions, you're the Supreme Oversight Board agent builder, so it understood the instructions. Define the agent templates, data analysis agent, customer service agent. That, I'm not sure why it came up with those ideas, so we're, we've got some work to do. Um, let's see, OpenAI assistant create name, description model, tools, and tools. Um, we don't have tools yet, so it's kind of confabulating there. Okay, so it looks like it's it's smart, but it's not quite smart enough to fully grok what we're trying to do. But I think we're off to a good start 
And um, so I'm going to pause the video here because my, my goal is not to overwhelm you with doing a whole lot at once. I'm also not trying to overwhelm myself. So what I do want to do is I'll come back over here. All this is up here, so I've got the OpenAI documentation and the README. I've also created a really simple diagram with the help of ChatGPT to kind of give you a, a very simple idea as to how the, 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 the structure will work. And they're all color-coded. So like Executive Agent 1 is the purple branch, and so then it owns every other thing under its branch. Um, but so this would be Tier 0, Tier 1, and Tier 2. But yeah, so... Uh, uh, other, other aspects of the re repo. I've got issues. Um, oh, I've got issues. All right. No kidding. Um, well, then we've also got the discussions tab. Um, so yeah, if you want to jump in, uh, jump into the discussions, I'll add a contributing, uh, document as well, just so that way you can get a little bit of guidance. But, but the rule of thumb is start with discussions, go to issues, then go to pull requests. If you just open a pull request without, uh, proper documentation or discussing it, it's probably going to get rejected. Um, but yes, yeah, so thanks for watching. I hope you like this and, uh, guys, let's get excited. Let's, let's, let's figure out how to build this, um, because we are so close. All right. Cheers.